words of power because we are kings and our words matter. Why was the Spirit of God moving? The Spirit of God was moving because the Spirit of God is waiting for the Word of God to be spoken. Because when the Word of God is spoken, if the Spirit of God is not working, what the Word says cannot come to pass. The Word of God comes to pass because the Spirit of God is in charge of operating in such a way to bring to pass what the Word of God says. The word of God can produce results on a scale that you, you know, you cannot even really comprehend. It can take you to another level beyond your wildest imagination. That's the power of the word of God. So the word of God has no problem. So it's not that, you know, this fails, this crop fails because the word is the problem. The word is the seed. The, the word is the seed, and that seed has no problem. There are some others who say, maybe in this case, in this case where the seed fell on the rock, maybe it's uh, talking about people that are not receptive to the word. Well, that is not so because here it is very clear. When they heard it, they received the word with joy. What more do you want for receptiveness? These are people that are receptive. They heard it. They came to church. They heard the word. They received it with joy. What more can a person do? You know, they received it with joy. There is something else missing. It's not that they did not receive it. They didn't doubt it. They didn't question it. They didn't argue against it. They didn't uh, disbelieve it. No, no problem. They came and received it. Gladly received it, it says, with joy. Some other people believe, maybe lack of heat. 
you need not only water but heat but this one has good heat because the slab is there it retains heat and gives forth heat in fact it causes it to shoot up much uh, more quickly than uh, normally it would so heat is no problem maybe some people say lack of joy have you ever heard people say to you when you eat you must eat happily because then only it'll stick to you <laughs> eh? when, a, when a guy is thin and doesn't grow any muscles on himself and he eats and eats and you wonder where it all went you know <laughs> when they look at people like that they say eat happily when you enjoy what you're eating eating then only it'll stick to you so people use that same logic with the word of god also they say when you hear it you must gladly receive it with joy you must receive then only it'll stick then only it'll produce but these people don't seem to have any such problem they received it with joy it says right they received it with joy some people say well maybe brother they lacked some eagerness and uh, they and speed in receiving the word of god they did not hear it and immediately received but it actually says in other gospels matthew and mark says not only they received it they received it as soon as they heard it immediately they received it with joy so there was speed and eagerness there was no problem they had all that then what is the problem the problem is what we read in verse 6 there is no moisture that's the problem but when jesus says there is no moisture how do you interpret it what what could he possibly mean when he says there is no moisture i think uh, the moisture refers to the work or the operation of the holy spirit in a person's life that must accompany the word of god being sown in the heart because that's a tremendous principle throughout the word of god in the beginning the bible says god created the heaven and earth the world was without form and void darkness was upon the face of the earth and the waters filled the earth and then it says the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters have you read that so here is darkness chaos and uh, formlessness there's a problem darkness chaos and formlessness and there over the waters the spirit of god was moving but the spirit of god was moving still the earth was as it was nothing was changed why was the spirit of god moving the spirit of god was moving because the spirit of god is waiting for the word of god to be spoken because when the word of god is spoken if the spirit of god is not working what the word says cannot come to pass the word of god comes to pass because the spirit of god is in charge of operating in such a way to bring to pass what the word of god says so both the word and the spirit are important so when you speak when you speak a word breath is accompanied with the word right you cannot speak without letting out some breath in the same way when god speak the spirit of god accompanies the word it is the word and the spirit spirit and the word together they accomplish the things for god the first three verses in the bible are so important i you know people talk about the big bang when they talk about evolution you know but this is a bigger bang than that you know i like this because the bible starts with this big bang the bible could have started in so many ways god could have decided to give us scientific details about how everything was formed and this and that and so on but god doesn't care he says in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth that's all and then it says it was without form void and there was darkness then it says the spirit of god was moving why the spirit was god the spirit of god was moving so that the word of god can be spoken so that the formlessness void and the darkness can be changed and set right so the very next verse says and god said let there be light and there was light and god saw that it was good what a tremendous way to start the bible therefore god is trying to show the bible is about this subject how to take your life that is without form void 
the life that is uh, that is that has no shape and form to it life that is uh, chaotic life that is filled with darkness and how by the word of god and by the spirit of god how it can be set right and every beautiful thing can be brought into life that's what the word of god is all about god is making a statement there i think because some people say they look at my bible and they are afraid and say brother that's very big book when am i going to finish this and when am i going to get the kind of life that you're talking about this is a big book brother it will take me many years to read it and then to understand it a lifetime is not enough how am i going to make it they say i say just understand three verses first three verses first three verses will set everything right in your life if you just listen to preaching on the first three verses and understand what god is trying to convey your life will be totally and absolutely changed it is about how to turn your life around it's about to turn how to turn your darkness into light your chaos into peace and your emptiness and how it can be filled with good things that's what the bible is all about so the spirit of god is there and the word of god is there right there in the first three verses it's there if you take the principle all the way down to the new testament when jesus is talking and saying the sower sows the word then immediately you recognize well the word is there you need the holy spirit that is why luke says he does not leave out what jesus said he remembers one thing that the others may have left out or forgotten or what he remembers to put it in he says it lacked moisture the operation of the holy spirit that is what it's referring to eh? the operation of the holy spirit what does holy spirit do the holy spirit uses his power and ability the bible says it is not by might nor by power but by the spirit of god the holy spirit by his power breaks that slab that rock it um, empties and pulls out that spot where that rock is and clears it and plows the place and makes it a place that can bear fruit so it is talking about the operation of the holy spirit in a person's life that ha- that must happen when the word of god is sown in that person's life then only the word of god can bring forth fruit in that person's life all right but let's go back to agriculture when you plant a crop moisture comes through many sources for example there is moisture in the air in the atmosphere already something that you cannot even see and sense ordinarily it is already there some moisture is there then there is dew that comes at night that wets and provides moisture then uh, rain comes down plus you can provide water from the well or whatever you know there are so many ways that moisture comes similarly it, when the word of god is sown in our heart the holy spirit usually is already working when the word is sown it is not that the holy spirit refuses to work in some people's life and gives up on them and that is why these people don't bear fruit no it is not like that the holy spirit just like moisture is right there in the air in the atmosphere is available through so many means the holy spirit is working in so many different ways i'm sure you have experienced that so many different ways he works some of you are sitting here or maybe you've been sitting here you know before you started coming regularly you came in here because someone brought you to please that other person you came in here and you were sitting waiting for it to be over you know and you thought you'll never like it you'll thought you'll never get involved but something happened here while you were there and today you are attending it more regularly than the person who brought you here <laughs> something has turned around what has happened the holy spirit was working on you he gives you opportunity it's like this Jesus said behold I stand at the door and knock if any man will open I will come in and I will sup with him and he with me so the holy spirit is a perfect gentleman he doesn't come through your back door he doesn't break your windows and get in he doesn't kick your doors and force himself in 
You only if you let him in, he will come in. So the Holy Spirit is always knocking. If you open, he will come in. And uh, this is all, always happening. Just like in the air, in the atmosphere, moisture is available. God, through the Holy Spirit, in so many ways, is dealing with people. At one point, you remember in the book of Genesis, before the flood came, God said, I will not strive with man anymore. That means he's been striving with man. He's been working with man, trying to convince him to turn around, trying to convince him to repent, trying to convince him to avoid the flood and all that, judgment and all of that. So God strives with man, literally. Strives with people. He just works with people so hard and so constantly, so continuously, he doesn't give up. He keeps on working with people, trying to draw their attention to what they need in life. So you can't say the Holy Spirit doesn't work and that's why this didn't bear fruit. The Holy Spirit was working. Moisture is, just like moisture is available everywhere in so many ways, the Holy Spirit was working. But, like I said, when someone is knocking the door, you need to open the door. If someone is knocking your house door, if you don't open it, see, an opening is not a big thing. You need to just get up and open it. If you don't open it, that person is going to knock and knock and knock and knock and go away. And maybe tomorrow he'll come and knock again. Maybe he'll keep on knocking every day. But you never open it, therefore he goes away. That is what was happening. There is no receptiveness on their part. All they need to just open in. Rest of it he'll take care. When he comes in, he says, things will be different. When he comes in, he can make a difference. But because there is no receptiveness... And they seem to manage without him and his help. God's word cannot produce any results in their life. The work and the operation of the Holy Spirit is not given place in their lives. That is why the fruit is not born, he says. Now, when you look at a believer or unbeliever, whatever, how do you recognize that this person lacks moisture, lacks the operation of the Holy Spirit. How can you tell by looking at a person that this person is dry <laughs> and he lacks moisture? He lacks the work and the operation of the Holy Spirit. There are many signs. I don't have the time to cover all of it, but I'll give you some clues and you can work on it and expand on it because there's so many. There are some clues. The first clue is this. Such people... They're interested in doctrine, but they personally in their lives do not submit to that doctrine. They are interested in doctrine for the sake of information. I, had, I, know, I, knew, I knew a person who was very interested in any teaching that had to do with the book of Revelation. If anybody talked about 666, he'll be there, you know. He's there in all those meetings, you know. Told me one time that we're having four days meeting. Today he's speaking on white horse, tomorrow on black horse. And <laughs> so, you know, he wanted all those details. And then he comes and says, well, brother, this man says this way and that man says that way. Which one is right, you know. I think I've heard all the views. His point is he wants to hear all the views. But he himself is, if you move with him and understand him, you'll find that spiritually there is something tremendously missing in his life. It's not that he's trying to get ready for the coming of Jesus and all that, you know. It is not that this thing, this teaching has changed his life. It's all just a matter of information. He wants to be, to, wants to be smarter than others. He wants to know more than others. He wants to understand the book of Revelation, which many people can't understand. So he makes an extra effort to do that. But personally, it means nothing to him. He doesn't submit to what he hears. Okay? And similarly, to other doctrines also. He believes in the doctrine of human depravity, that mankind is in sin, fallen into sin, and depraved and in a depraved condition. He believes it. He believes that the Bible teaches it. He believes uh, uh, the content of that theology. But he is unable to see his own depravity. He does not even understand that he is in need of Christ, that something must happen to him. See, that kind of a person. 
when you see a person like that, then you see a person who is without moisture, without the operation of the Holy Spirit. Another sign is a person who is experience oriented. He's interested in experience. Have you seen Christians like that, particularly believers? They want experiences. Even some unbelievers are like that. They want some experience. You know. Uh, I heard one person come to me and say, well, have you received the baptism of fire? I said, is that a new thing that has come in? He said, yeah. The baptism of fire. I said, brother, I've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But this fire baptism, he said, that's a new thing. You need to receive it. If you're interested, we'll pray for you. Uh, another person came to me once and said, you need to receive the original tongues that they spoke in Acts chapter 2. <laughs> original tongues. Exact same one. I'm not joking, I'm not uh, exaggerating at all. These are things that happen. So if you come to our church, we'll be able to get you the original tongues, you know. So they're offering some, something new all the time. Uh, it's like circus, you know. I remember when the circus started out, there was no three-ring circus, you know. It's an ordinary circus, you know. But then it became three-ring circus because something happened in three rings at the same time so you don't get bored, you know. You look here, look there, look there. <laughs> something is happening in three different pl places, you know. Because people got tired of looking at the same thing. You got to provide them more entertainment. Now, some people are like that. They're experienced. Or they want this experience, that experience. They're never through with experiences. But, but the thing is, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a dipped and dyed Pentecostal, you know. Uh, so I have no problem with uh, experiences and all these extreme things and all. I've been in it, I know it, and I don't really mind it really. If it's productive, I don't really mind it and, and so on. But the problem is after they went through everything, they have so many experiences. One fellow said, I've been to heaven and God showed me around and showed me so many things. So other people that listened to him said, they, we want to go to heaven also. <laughs> so I'm going to fast and pray for seven days so God will take me to heaven, show me he personally, give me a tour of heaven. <laughs> and, uh, you know, then another person comes and says, I went to hell and met the devil. And so these people want to go to hell also, you know. Uh, some other person says, I heard, the, I heard the audible voice of God. So there are some people going after the audible voice of God. Another person says, I saw that, you know, I, I, I saw an angel. And the angel came and spoke to me. Have you ever had an experience like that? I remember one time one fellow was asking me, one after the other, have you seen an angel? Have you any time heard the audible voice? Uh, have you seen a devil at least, you know? <laughs> and here I am, I haven't seen anything, you know? So he thought I was absolutely useless, no, not a spiritual person at all. How can you be a preacher without seeing any of these things? I said, brother, Jesus said, you see and you believe, blessed are those who have not seen, but yet believe. <laughs> I've, I have no problem. I believe in heaven. I believe in hell. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in angels. I believe, uh, you know, that there are, there are devils and all of that business, you know. And Jesus says, I'm more blessed because I haven't seen yet, I believe. But I'm not going to try to see a devil, you know. Why would I want to try to see a devil, you know? But the problem, but I'm not, you know, I'm not so much against these people having these experiences. If someone had some experience, that's fine with me. Like I said, I mean, I, I've been from that background, you know, I've seen all these things. Nothing is new to me, believe me. If it's there, if it's out there, I've seen it. If I've not seen it, it's not there, you know. <laughs> but, but the thing is this. After all the experiences, you meet these people, they've had tremendous experiences, gone to heaven, hell, and seen angels, devils, everything, had all kinds of experience, heard the very voice of God audibly and everything. But when you go with them and sit with them for 10 minutes, you find that they are, something is missing. <laughs> they just don't have it together. 
they just don't have a spiritual life. There is no real change in their lives. There is no real change of attitudes. There is no real change of life. Amazing. After you had all these experiences, there is actually no change in that person. Why? When you see a person like that, you're looking at a person who does not have the operation of the Holy Spirit along with the word of God in his life. There is no word, there is no Holy Spirit working. If the word and the Holy Spirit are there, everything that needs to be put aright will be put aright, set aright. The life will turn into something beautiful and wonderful because God takes chaotic, dark, empty life and turns it into something beautiful and something wonderful. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light And the burden of my heart rolled away It was there 